course, we still have one other semifinal that will be coming up here very, very shortly, which will be uh, Dream Team versus Tempo Storm. Ooh, yeah. And that's going to be good. Oh, that definitely is. Really, really exciting matches so far today. You know, we have our next semifinal match coming up. Like we said, Dream Team versus Tempo Storm. Of course, Dream Team did 2-0 Wad Baby Feral uh, mm -hmm. to land in the semis. And Tempo Storm uh, had a 2-1 over Victoria's Secret um, in that matchup. So uh, exciting, exciting matches today. Um, and of course, we do have one team that is in the grand finals so far. Yep. Um, and so we'll have to see who will face off against them. Both Dream Team and Tempo Storm are crowd favorites. So... Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's going to be like either, uh, as, like we said earlier, any single one of these teams that was playing today is the sort that you would expect to see uh, advancing. So it's just kind of a, well, let's see how this shakes out sort of thing. But man, it has been, it's been some good shaking to see where we get today. <laughs> um, Dream Team versus Tempo Storm, that is, that is going to be an epic match. Um, we will be getting that going here very, very shortly. Of course, the first map, as usual, will be on the Grand Arena. Um, and Dream Team will be playing the Frost Mage, Affliction Warlock, Resto Druid. I'm glad, I'm glad they're sticking with that. Yeah, and they'll be going up against Temple Storm, playing uh, the RMD yet again, that Resto Druid, Frost Mage, and Assassination. Mode. Yeah, Pika's going to be going for that burst. That's what they're going for, that Assassination. Going to have a little less uh, control, not having that Shadow Dance, but mm -hmm. uh, Pika really needs to do that damage. You can line up those uh, double Novas, followed by uh, a lot of the burst from that Envenom. And because, uh, you know, plus with their uh, set bonuses, they can really chain a lot of those five point Envenoms in a very, very quick time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how he's able to to play the uh, Assassination Rogue in this match. We will be getting that queued up here very, very shortly and be able to bring that match to you guys because uh, I've. I know I'm excited for it. <laughs> I, I hope that the, oh, yeah. the viewers are excited for it as well. This has been this has been an amazing day of games so far. A couple hiccups early on, but amazing game of day, uh, game of days, <laughs> amazing day of games uh, so far. We do have uh, a little bit of a delay on getting both of these teams ready to go into this match, so we will be getting in that very very shortly. But I uh, just want to make sure that everybody has time uh, to do basically whatever it is that they need to do to get ready. If they need to do some push-ups, if they need to, <laughs> I don't know, chug some water or something, whatever it is they need to do to get ready to go. Of course, that does now mean, uh, going back to the, the previous match, it does mean that Rise of Lasak has qualified. They will be moving on to the Americas Regionals. And the Americas Regionals, we have that $100,000 prize pool. And the way that's split out, uh, it's $50,000 for first place, which is a pretty big deal. Um, and then it is, uh, I believe it's, yeah, 20,000 for second place, uh, 10,000 for third place, uh, 8,000 for fourth place. And then the fifth and sixth players both get $4,000. And the seventh and eighth teams both get uh, $2,000. So everybody that's qualified already is getting at least some money. That means that um, the uh, Rise of the Sock, they've already earned at least 2K. <laughs> you yep. you kind of want to turn that 2K into a 50K, <laughs> but still, they have earned at least some money so far. So that's, that's really, really cool. And that's one of the things that's really awesome about having that big prize pool for the America's Regionals. All right, looks like uh, we might be getting queued up right now. This is going to be an exciting match again because we are in the semis. We are doing best of five, so the first team to three wins mm -hmm. will win. And, uh, of course, we are going to start on the Grand Arena. Double blind pick, so these teams don't know what, what uh, the teams are going to run. But uh, this is kind of what, what you would expect out of the other team, you know, that, that RMD versus, versus the uh, MLS or MLD in this case because uh, these are all what these players are known for playing. Yep. So... <clears throat> Looks like uh, we're just going to wait a minute for these teams to get ready because this is a huge match. Of course, coming down to it, this you move on to the grand finals, you guarantee your place in uh, for the American regionals. Mm -hmm. And like we said before, that prize pool is bigger than ever. Yep. Yep, it is very, very exciting. So as soon as we can get into this match, um, I, I know you guys are excited for it. I'm excited for it oh, as well. Yes. We're getting this going as soon as possible. Um, worth noting that... Uh, we do have two other teams that are already qualified. Of course, BBAU from the uh, Australia-New Zealand uh, playoffs that they had there, um, as long, along with Is Butter a Carb, uh, which was Channimals and... Remember, it was Channimals was the team captain. I don't actually, off the top of my head, remember who the other players on that team were, uh, which is very, very unfortunate. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that team will already have qualified as well. Um, and so all of them also already have at least that, that 2K to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, but of course you want to be able to win the bigger prize pool and obviously move on to BlizzCon as well, yeah, which has an even bigger the, prize pool. Yeah. 
that's what everyone is going for in, in this year. It is awesome to make it to regionals, and it is awesome to get that fifty thousand dollar prize pool. But everyone wants to be BlizzCon champions. That's yeah. that's a huge, huge prize pool. Uh, normally, there's trophies or rings, you know, depending on uh, what year it is. Um, and we've seen a lot of BlizzCon champions already at this tournament, so that's mm -hmm. something that people remember. Yeah. Yeah, and we've seen BlizzCon champions doing incredibly well already, too. Of course, this next match, uh, Dream Team, uh, Talbadar and Soda, they won BlizzCon 2013 along with Channels, who won uh, the, the first online qualifier cup and is already qualified. Um, so we're seeing a ton of those repeat victories coming back again. And it's, it's so awesome to see the stories of these players as time goes on. And they keep winning tournaments, they keep playing, they keep winning, they keep playing, keep winning. And it's really, really awesome to see and really allows people to, to have a favorite team and a favorite <laughs> player and so on. It's really, really cool. But the match is now finally starting. Uh, we've been able to get into this. It's going to be Tempo Storm versus Dream Team in our second semifinal match of the day. Um, and we will be moving into this game here very shortly. We can uh, take a look at Peekaboo's uh, talents. It's pretty much expected from uh, an assassination rogue. Of course, uh, Glyphic dis Disappearance is just incredible. Uh, it doesn't leave you stealth when Vanish ends, but reduces cooldown by a minute. It's mm -hmm. great for that set bonus. As we do have uh, Jamili, of course, is going to be playing uh, very standard, you know, using that Frost Jaw. Uh, instead of the ring, uh, everything else pretty straightforward. And uh, Heart of the Wild and Soul of the Forest on Starship again. And of course, uh, Sam I am is going to be same thing as uh, Snuts is going to be pretty pretty straightforward also. So this is uh, pretty much going to go Supremacy instead of uh, Sack, which we've seen some of Flitch and Warlocks use lately. Yep. Um, and again, Soul of the Forest and Nature's Vigil instead on Soda. So the gates are going to open. We're going to follow Peekaboo out to see how this Assassination Rogue can play out. Haven't seen him play Assassination Rogue in a tournament yet, so that'll be interesting to see. As he is going to start right away, it looks like damage is going to be going on. Sam I am immediately getting Iron Bark and having to Hellstone. So there's a lot of cooldowns out straight from the start. Full blind onto Soda as he is going to sit it as it uh, looks like Sam I am is going to go out and try to get offensive even though he's taking a bunch of damage. He gets that sheep onto Starship, which means Jamili is going to pull back because he's also taking a ton of damage too as uh, the two mages are kind of dueling behind this pillar uh, just dumping damage into himself. Peekaboo waddling his way over to Sam I am but able to connect and uh, dealing a lot of damage already but Jamili again just taking so much damage because Starship is going to be CC'd. We see that bash come out looks like it may have been trinketed right away. Nope. Um, and then uh, Snuts those uh, second Dark Soul which actually is going to force the block out of Jamili. Yeah. He wants to stay offensive. Yeah, he was getting super, super low there, and it looked like he was trying to hold on to his block as long as possible, which is so important in these majors. But the I, uh, smoke bomb comes out on Sam I Am. That's going to force his block as well, so now both mages are even on those ice blocks. Such a very important thing uh, to have happen in a mage versus mage setup. And Sam I Am actually didn't get too much healing while he was in that block. No, so it's because be of the CC trouble. as Starship pushed all the way up, but he is going to get deep polyed because of it. The ring goes down but doesn't connect with everyone. Sam I Am, again, getting quite low as uh, he is going to have that Iron Bark go out on him. Soda is not CC'd quite yet, but was able to toss a uh, Cyclone out, followed by a, a Fear onto Starship, but Sam I Am again getting so low that Deep comes out onto Soda. Sam I Am needs Ooh. the block here because Snuts was bashed also. This cross CC is just incredible by Tempo Storm. Yeah, and if they could have had that happen a little bit sooner, um, they actually, he was just barely out of hypothermia by the time that he got that second block off. So they, they may have actually been able to kill him there if they just had a few more seconds to be able to, to get that chain of CC out. But fortunately for Dream Team, that did not happen. Now they're trying to turn it back around and go on to Jamili uh, and punish him a little bit. Starship getting caught into this sheep here, um, but does not look like they really have enough in the way of follow-up CC on him. Uh, and so Jamili is looking totally fine with that Iron Bark on him. Uh, and they're just doing, once again turning it back around onto Sam I Am, who has no ice blocks remaining for quite some time. His soda is stuck in this uh, Ring of Frost. Uh, he really needs to be able to continue putting those those heals out. The blind comes out, does have the iron bark active as well as a bunch of heal over time effects. So uh, it looks like Sam I Am is going to be able to survive through that. But Soda is having to chew through all of his cooldowns. He has no trinket, no iron bark, no nature swiftness. There's really nothing left for him. So if Sam I Am isn't careful, he could be in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, this uh, Snuts really needs to start pushing out damage because they're just controlling Sam I Am uh, as uh, he's not able to 
set anything up. Uh, it looks like he is going to be caught in that kidney. So does not in CC quite yet. As Sam I am just taking a ton of damage, getting low with that Karote. That we see the cheap shot on to Soda. As Sam I am is just going to blink back as he's going to try to get some heal. Wow, Soda barely getting those heals out. And as he does get stunned, Sam I am again really low. The double trying to get offensive onto uh, onto Starship actually. As uh, he's sitting quite low yet again. As Soda is in that poly, followed by the Cyclone, and he's behind the pillar. They're not even in line of sight of each other. The small heels come out as we see Garot onto Snuts. Peekaboo was everywhere towards the end of that. It did yeah. force the block onto to Jamili. I did like that the team really identified that. Okay, this CC chain is probably going to kill uh, Sam I am, so we really need to push something back and try to get a cross kill onto Jamili. It was close, forced the second block out of him. Yeah, they, they actually really held on a lot longer than realistically they should have in that situation. Sam I am had like 8,000 health at one point. <laughs> uh, a single, like, a, a water elemental, like, auto attack would have killed him at that point. Um, so it was actually amazing that Soda was able to keep him alive for as long as he, as he did. Um, and of course, very, very intelligent positioning from Sam I am as well as that. Uh, uh, cross CC that you were talking about. So that was a very, very impressive first game. Uh, of course, that does mean that Tempo Storm is now up 1-0 in this series. It is a best of five, so they have to win three matches before they will be able uh, to take this series. Um, but Dream Team can easily come back. It's now going to be their map pick, um, and they do have uh, a few different comps that they could swap between as well um, if they so choose. So we'll have to see what they actually decide to do from here. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you look at the roster that they have, Sam I am is definitely their mage. He's going to be sticking to that. Soda is going to be playing just Resto Druid. You know, he is a very well-known uh, priest at this point, but priest is just not as strong as Resto Druid at the moment. Um, so he'll be sticking to that Resto Druid. And of course, Snuts can pretty much play everything. <laughs> um, I do believe he has uh, UA Lock, Demo, or uh, Affliction Warlock, Demonology Warlock, Sub Rogue, Arms Warrior, Fury Warrior, Shadow Priest. We've seen him play all of those on stream lately too. And of course, then they have Talbadar able to play Shadow Priest, Moonkin, and Elemental Shaman. So there's so much depth onto this roster. Yeah, definitely. I kind of hope that we get to see Talbadar play um, a little bit just because I, I really like the way that he plays. He makes very, very intelligent choices. Um, but that may not make the most sense for yeah, whatever map yeah, they I think, end up picking. Yeah, I think RMD against the, the comps that you would probably see him play, I could see them pulling out uh, God Comp or Shadow Play, you know, having that Shadow Priest with the Frost Mage of Sam I Am, I, I could see them playing that. Um, the, the Moonkin Mage, again, was was a pretty well-known comp, but it kind of fallen off a little bit with the other, the rise of all these comps that just eat Moonkins alive. So um, it'll, I don't know, if they could put him in, you know, maybe they could pair him with Snuts and, and play something, but it's going to be tough. Yeah, it is going to be uh, Ruins of Lordaeron is Dream Team's choice. So they'll be playing on Ruins of Lordaeron. Tempo Storm is going to be sticking with that Resto Druid, Frost Mage, and Assassination Rogue. So apparently he liked the assassinations. He's going to stick with that. Um, and we'll be finding out if Dream Team has decided to make any sort of comp switch here very, very shortly. Uh, and then we'll be getting into this second game. Yeah, so we're just waiting on their comp at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I mean, we talked about, uh, you know, Snuts and Soda and... Uh, Talbadar being BlizzCon champions, you know, so did our Snuts was able to win uh, when we went to China for the VWC. It's mm -hmm. an exciting tournament. Um, and he actually took a break right before that, that tournament too, which was interesting. You know, being able to uh, just come back in. And that's, that's how you can tell these players are just so incredible that even though sometimes they take breaks, they can get back into the game, get right back at the top of their game. Um, and there's a reason why we see these players consistently over the years being at the top of tournament results. Yep. All right, so the map is now loading up, and we will be getting into this match here very, very shortly. Dream Team is sticking uh, with that uh, Frost Mage, Affliction Warlock, and uh, Resto Druid. So we'll have to see how they're able to do that here on Ruins of Lordaeron, if they can uh, come back and get themselves a couple victories here, um, or if Tempo Storm is going to continue to uh, take some wins and possibly move on. Looks like no talent changes out of anyone so far. A Ring of Frost uh, coming out from Jamili this time um, and from Say My Am. They both have uh, been bouncing back and forth between Frostjaw and, um, and Ring of Frost. And of course, uh, Snut's just pretty straightforward. 
and Peekaboo, no changes out of him too. So we'll see if he'll be able to make something happen. He's really been doing so well on this assassination rope so far, but Dream Team really needs to come back. They need this map to get the momentum back in their favor. Right out of the starts, let's see, we do get the gateway down. Uh, so they'll be able to use that if needed as Peekaboo immediately is going to open up on to Snuts. As it uh, looks like Snuts able to get away from there. It's, they're just going to go hard right from the start. We see that Demon uh, or Dark Soul just come out as Starship is going to be sheeped also as Starship was playing quite offensive. We're going to see a Cyclone also um, didn't land full blind onto Soda. He's just going to sit it as uh, now we see the cross CC coming out as Snuts' as Demon Soul is going to fade. Sam, I am though taking a whole bunch of damage as Soda did get sapped during that exchange as uh, Sam, I am is just pulling back and there we go. They forced the block even before the deep freeze landed onto Soda. He is going to be half ringed at that point as uh, Jamili tossing out the CC also. And that brutal CC chain ends uh, and forced the block out of him. So that was really, really great by Temple Storm. Yeah, yeah, very, very nice opener from Temple Storm yet again. Really just able to put the pressure to Dream Team here. However, Soda does still have all of his defensive cooldowns available, including that trinket, which is just so important here. Now the deep freeze onto Starship, and they may be able to follow it up. They're going to follow it up with the Ring of Frost uh, and maybe into a, uh, a Polymorph as well. They're trying to put some damage into Jamili here, and there is the Polymorph coming out. Jamili actually dipping super low. Has Whoa. to go ahead and ice block there. Yeah, that was that was quite amount, a large amount of burst right there with that great CC by uh, Soda onto Starship, and Starship had Heart of the Wild popped there, as we do see the cross CC. See, this is what Dream Team needs to do to get back into the game. They need to take a, uh, take a card out of Tempo Storm's, uh, play deck and just, you know, really do that cross CC. It's something we haven't seen out of them quite yet in this tournament. Yeah. Of course, uh, Dream Team doing their best to try to keep Starship Polymorph. Uh, stuck into various types of CC so they can continue doing some damage here, but Jamili actually hopping up into this little candle nook here uh, in the, the opening area. Taking a bit of damage, he's going to have to go ahead and get that uh, Iron Bark as a Fear comes out onto Starship, uh, which interesting to note, uh, a change in Warlords of Draenor, which uh, has happened quite a while ago at this point, uh, but does mean that the, uh, the Fear does share diminishing returns with Cyclone. Um, so it's always interesting to see whether or not it's Fear or Cyclone that actually comes out. Um, but in this case, it wasn't. In fact, that Fear. Wow. Sam I am, though, down to 5% health, having to use his Ice Block. That's his last remaining Ice Block. That was a lot of damage in a hurry. Yeah, it was. As uh, looks like we are going to have a full blind onto Soda. Sam I am again is kind of in trouble at this point, as he is going to have Peekaboo right on him from that step. The bomb comes out on uh, to Sam I am. As there we go. Now he's going to be able to get out of it. Blazing speed a little bit away. They've been doing a great job of CCing Peekaboo so far this match. I think he's done a lot less this time around, except for those uh, short bursts. As uh, looks like we are going to see a banish onto the pet. As uh, Sam I am again trying to do as much as he can, trying to stay away from Peekaboo, trying to get that pet out, but Sam I am getting dangerously low as Soda is not able to pick him back up. Didn't have Nature's Swiftness available at that point, and he is going to go down, so that it is going to mean his series is in favor of Tempo Storm 2 0 at this point. Yeah, that was, that was I, I think Soda kind of got caught by surprise there. Uh, in the amount of damage that it was or something just because he was out of CC um, And I think he was just trying to get some dots up or excuse me some some hots up on him some heal over time effects um, and That that that's the right thing to do in that situation if they're gonna survive long enough But he really needed to be getting out uh, those regrowths at that point um, He just wasn't able to get them out in time. Uh, he may have actually been locked on it thinking about it I'm not I'm not actually certain um, but it definitely was a situation where uh, unfortunately, that Sam I am, he had no ice blocks left remaining. Um, There's nothing left that he could do, and that's just how Temple Storm has been playing this. It's just sort of dismantling their opposition and saying, we're going to put you in a situation where you can do literally nothing other than stand there and die. So it's working out well for them. They're now up 2-0 in this series. I think that was a much better match overall for Dream Team, though. Um, if uh, we were following uh, Peekaboo a lot during that match, and he really didn't do much except for his small burst windows, mm. uh, which is a lot as a rogue, of course. But um, in terms of like being able to run around and CC, you know, Sam Am did a great job of uh, CCing him a lot, and of course, Soda was tossing cyclones out, everything. So, um, great job by Dream Team. Unfortunately, not able to take that map, so it is going to be 2-0 for Tempo Storm. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are one win away uh, from being from able to qualify. Yeah. yeah. Yep, so we're just waiting to see what map uh, Dream Team wants to pick this time around. Of course, that last map was their map choice as well. Um, so maybe maybe if, if Ruins of Lordaeron was their like ideal, um, doesn't mean they no longer have that available because they cannot repick the same map 
uh, again. Uh, can't play a map that has already been played. Uh, so we'll find out here very shortly what their map choice actually is. We like to give them a little bit of time to discuss it and make sure that they, they don't feel like rushed into picking a map yeah. and then go, oh, wait, 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 we shouldn't <laughs> have picked this one and then we lost because of that. You know, we want to make sure that both of these teams are able to play at their finest um, here in this semifinal match. I think Dream Team is kind of in trouble here, though, because the, the other comps I've seen them playing a lot, of course, that is going to be that Ellie Lock, which we've seen. I saw Talbot are practicing on that um, on stream, but... I, I don't think it would work well against this uh, this RMD though, so they really have to stick with this lock mage and they just have to win. Like that's, they don't have to try to like find some sneaky counter comp or tactical change or anything. They just need to do everything right, land their cross CCs, punish uh, Starship when he pushes up, so. Yeah. Yeah, Tempo Storm, um, if they do end up winning this, they will be going up against Rise of Lasak, and both of these teams have been doing that constant CC chain so incredibly well that that could be a very, very exciting match because it's going to be more about making sure you interrupt the other team's CC chain. Of course, uh, Dream Team is obviously trying to interrupt the CC chain as much as they possibly can in this match uh, because that's what's causing them to lose. But we'll have to see um, if they're able to do that. And if, if Tempo Storm does win this next match, they will be going up against Rise of the Sock in the Grand Finals. So Dream Team is going to pick Tiger's Peak as their map choice. Uh, that means Tempo Storm can pick their comp, but I really can't see them... No, they're playing I mean, so well. Maybe with it. swapping assassination back to subtlety. Uh, nope, looks like they are going to yeah. stick with uh, Resto Druid, Frost Mage, and Assassination Rogue. Pika just doing a great job on Assassination Rogue so far, um, and of course Jamili. Uh, you know, can't say enough about him. He's doing a great job tossing CC all over uh, Soda during those matches. Uh, Soda's having a really tough time dealing with it. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. they are going to. Yeah. Well, I I would have expected so, them to not do this whatsoever, but it looks like we are going to see Talbadar on Ellie Shaman, mm -hmm. um, and then we are going to have Snuts on that Affliction Warlock, and of course Soda on that Resto Druid. So it's going to be an interesting match to see. We're going I, back to Mr. Pandaria here with yeah. the uh, the Lock Shaman Druid comp. I don't know though. I think the the shamans or the shamans just going to get eaten alive by that rogue. I, yeah. I can't see a situation where they don't go after him for the kill anyway. Yeah, but at the same time, I think it's worth it's like it's worth a shot. Yeah, they're not yeah. winning with what they yeah. have right now. So okay, let's let's try this. Let's see what happens. Um, and the elemental shaman, um, they did actually get some buffs fairly recently mm -hmm. um, so that increased their uh, I believe it was their lava burst damage. Yep, and up. cooldown of ascendance is way down. Oh, yeah. So that's that's pretty awesome for them. So yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, if any Ellie shaman's gonna do it, it's gonna be Talbadar. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we will be getting into this match here uh, very, very shortly. Just as soon as these teams are completely ready, we're just trying to queue up the, the game here uh, and get this to you guys as quickly as possible. I'm, I'm excited about this match. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping we'd get to see Talbadar play a little bit, so yeah. it sounds like that's what we're going uh, to get here uh, just as soon as this queue uh, comes through for us. So we will be getting into this match here very, very shortly uh, with Dream Team versus Tempo Storm. Of course, as we've said before, Tempo Storm is up 2-0 in this series. If Tempo Storm wins this, they qualify. They're going to regionals, and they're going to the grand finals here today as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and it's going to be up to Dream Team uh, to, to live the dream and come back uh, from a 2-0 deficit. They're going to have to win three games in a row if they want to, uh, uh, if they want to advance uh, here today. Of course, it's important to note, as we've said before in this broadcast, um, there are going to be, there is going to be another qualifier cup uh, the next, the, the Cup 3, uh, which will be taking place the week of August 15th, um, and we'll be broadcasting the Round of 8 once again on August 15th. That is going to be another chance for all these teams to compete, and three teams will be qualifying from Cup 3. So if they don't make it in today, they're not, they're not, like, there's, there's still a good chance for them to be able to go on to the America's Regionals uh, and have a shot at that $100,000 prize pool and that trip to BlizzCon. Yeah, what's really interesting with three teams, I mean, if you look at the brackets, that means that, uh, we're going to have to have a playoff from third and fourth, which yeah. is really interesting because they, they wouldn't have met each other uh, through the brackets whatsoever so far at that point. So yeah. uh, that'll be an exciting tournament, of course. Three spots, it's kind of your final chance to qualify. Pretty scary. You know, when you're coming down to that last matchup. Okay, so we are going to get into Tiger's Peak. Again, like we said, we are going to see that ele elemental shaman come out from Talbadar. Um, as looks like, again, Soda is going to be playing Resto Druid with... Uh, of course, Blaspidar on the uh, <laughs> on the shaman. I love that I is love Talbadar. the name of his elemental shaman. Yeah, he's got some pretty good names for his alts. As uh, looks like Stutz is going to be playing just exactly what we thought, normal setups. And uh, take a look, and it looks like Unleash Fury is going to be his uh, 90 talent. 
and um, echo with the elements, of course. And what's really interesting to note is, so we need to change to, uh, to crowd control. Any area effect crowd control, you can only be affected by it once, right? So like a solar beam, you get once. Ring a piece, you only get once, right? So we've heard some complaints from players about, um, about the earthquake stun, actually, and it's like, wow, it just keeps restunning me. Mm. It doesn't actually keep restunning you. It's because Echo the Elements allows you so much shorter cooldown on, uh, on Earthquake that when they stack two in a row, it's actually a lot of damage. So maybe that's their, maybe that's their play, like trying to get them back into a corner and getting those Earthquakes out. And uh, it's going to be an excellent disruption right from the start. It looks like he just went for it to try to find where the the uh, Rogue was not able to land it because we do see the Bash uh, coming out from Soda, but he is immediately going to be deeped and ringed. But uh, look at this, uh, not good as uh, Talbadar is going to have to port away. We see that CC just landing all over Soda as uh, there we go. Now the full blind, but he was able to get the Iron Bark out first and a couple heals. So Talbadar might be okay. The first Ascendance comes out. He's going to go for a Hex, but he's going to get cloned on his Ascendance immediately. Yeah, and this is actually kind of looking really scary for Dream Team right now because Soda's had to use pretty much every single one of his cooldowns yet again. Uh, he does go into the bear form immediately before that deep comes out, so he will not be get polymorphed off of that. Uh, and so Tempo Storm is going to follow that up with the offensive Cyclone onto Blaspidar, but it's just so much damage. He's just going to go down. Yeah, it's... That was pretty much how I thought it was going to happen. <laughs> um, I mean, great job by, uh, by Tempo Storm tossing out that CC on uh, to... Uh, to Soda, uh, you know, Snuts really didn't have time to get his uh, dots rolling that much, but that just excellent amount of CC straight from the start as uh, Soda is going to try to uh, run away for a little bit. Is, uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to get a res off 3v1, um, <laughs> but again, Starship you chasing gotta go him with the Heart it, of the please. Wild. You got to. Yeah. As, uh, well, there we go. So that is going to be Tempo Storm 3-0 over Dream Team. That means Tempo Storm is going to qualify for American Regionals. Mm -hmm. Going to be one of the eight teams trying to battle for those spots at BlizzCon and the $50,000 first, first prize. That is, of course, assuming that they are actually ever able to actually kill Soda. <laughs> yeah. He's just running around here. I think... There oh, we go. Yeah. He's just going to go ahead and drop out. So that yeah, is I mean, going it, to be Yeah, I mean, even that. if you look at the damage, like, it looks like Snots did get a bunch of damage out, uh, a lot more than I thought he did. Um, was able to get some haunts out, uh, but Talbadar, you know... Right from the start, it was just beginning to end. A little bit of CC onto uh, Soda, who actually healed for a whole lot. Yeah. As you can see, even though he was uh, CC'd a lot, but you know those double Ice Novas, 50,000 was the highest Ice Nova from Jamili. Big 86,000 uh, in Venom coming out of Peekaboo. So I know it was, uh, it was a great job by, uh, by Temple Storm taking it 3-0 in this match. Yep, so that does mean that Temple Storm will be advancing to the Grand Finals, and we now have both of our teams qualified uh, from North American Cup 2, or North America Online Qualifier Cup 2. Uh, both Temple Storm and Rise of Lesoc have now qualified, uh, but we do still have to crown a victor today. We need to have our Grand Finals and see who will actually be the, the champion of North America Online Cup 2, so we will be moving on to those finals here for you um, very, very shortly. But first, we are going to take a very quick bake. Bake? Going to take a very quick break. Mm -hmm. Apparently I'm thinking of muffins or something at the moment. Uh, we will be right back to you guys uh, after this short break. <laughs> 